So super p great pleasure to be here. Uh, despite what John says, I'm actually not that busy. So uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm actually uh, thrilled to be here. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll start with a um, very brief sort of summary of ancestry and uh, hopefully put in context uh, some of the lessons that I have been part of learning and uh, been along for a long uh, uh, f for the ride for, for a lot of these things. Um, but, but it's been a, a fantastic journey, uh, as, I, as I'll try to talk about a little bit today, um, watching and helping the evolution uh, of our organization become better, faster, uh, more responsive to our customers, and, and frankly, just more effective at delivering on our mission. So uh, we're one of those interesting internet businesses that's been around for 17 years. Um, and, and I think we largely invented the commercial category of online family history. People have been doing family history forever, literally. And, uh, and, and, but, but we have, over the past you know, 17 years, in a series of waves, we think really revolutionized how people do it. And with that, the number of people that can do it. Uh, and and uh, we're really proud of the fact that as the category leader, um, we take very seriously our responsibility to be the category innovator uh, as well. So we have about uh, 2.7 million uh, paying subscribers around the world. Uh, about a third of that is outside the United States. Uh, the core of the business is a phenomenal collection of digitized historical content supplemented by family trees that people build and upload to our site, supplemented by all the media that people scan on their own and upload to our site and share uh, with the rest of that community. So uh, 12 billion record count uh, is, our, is our latest number. And that's sort of, a, uh, again, an aggregation of about 55 million uh, individual family trees um, and uh, uh, about 175 million individually scanned documents, photographs, stories that people write and upload to their own family tree, and then most of the time uh, share that with the rest of the community. Um, and we did uh, just under, about, under $500 million in revenue last year, which I think most people are a little surprised that Ancestry is as large uh, as it is. Uh, but family history is you know, one of those things that's pretty universal. Um, so this is our mission. Um, and our mission is to uh, help everyone, everyone hopefully, discover, preserve, and share their family history. Um, and, and obviously this mission you know, underpins uh, almost everything we try to do at the company, but I think it's also particularly relevant to uh, this topic today because to do this, we have to pretty massively evolve or really move forward in more revolutionary steps the actual product experience on Ancestry. Um, family history, even with all the years of investment that uh, we've, uh, we've made, is still something that is hard to do. And, and, and frankly, most of our subscribers love the fact that it's a challenge and a, a journey of discovery. But this vision has a view that we really want to make it something that anyone can do. Uh, including those sizable populations of folks that don't want to invest the same amount of time, that don't come to family history with the genealogist hobbyist mentality. Uh, and therefore, we want to make it something that's, you know, that it isn't today, that is easy, universally accessible, and a whole lot of magic sort of behind that technology. Um, therefore, innovation, constant innovation, Speed of innovation is, it's, it's not too dramatic to say, is the only thing that matters in terms of driving growth uh, in the future. Uh, we do a lot, we, we spend a lot of money marketing, but marketing only essentially matches the innovations and the evolution of that value proposition. It's not going to grow the market for us. It's going to be successful at helping us grow the market, but at the core of our business mission, to deliver on this mission, we have to innovate and we have to create new product experiences constantly that are better and better and better to appeal to more and more people over time. So in talk, and, and, and so therefore, before, you know, 
this topic, these topics that, that, uh, that I've been you know, learning about from John and others over the past several years uh, have become absolutely critical to like, how we view our future going forward. So before I talk about going forward or today, I want to wind the clock back to 2006 uh, and talk about, uh, as an example of what we don't do anymore, um, a massive, audacious, ambitious, giant project that we took on in 2006 when we recognized that, wow, it was time for Ancestry to pivot away from just being a place that people search for records and access an incredible collection to a place that you know, now people could begin to store their own family history and have family trees and upload their own content and share that content with other members of the community. So it was a real pivot in the, in the whole uh, you know, core of the value proposition. And, and this was a, so we had a long list of ideas, which became a long list of requirements. And we wrote those requirements, and off we went. And um, this project was a long project. Uh, I think it was something like six months or more. Um, and it was interesting, a lot of learnings and a lot of lessons. So why do we do it this way? Um, well, as I said, we envisioned that we needed change. We needed a ton of change, and so our idea was just to do it. Do it all in one big, giant leap forward. Uh, we also kind of had to do it that way, given the technology and the architecture and the infrastructure that we had at the time. There, there wasn't a real ability to, no services, not, not a whole bunch of services sort of underpinning uh, the systems. And so we were pretty locked into doing it in that sort of classical way. I think our culture at the time, and certainly you know, my own experience, was to do it this way. I had never heard, I'm not a technologist. I should have said that sort of at the, at the top of this. Um, but I, I didn't know anything about Agile or, or uh, any of the things that we have since adopted as sort of core to our development process. Impatience, I think incorrectly, we viewed that we had a lot to do, and we needed to just do it all at once, right? Because we just, it was just such a huge uh, leap forward for us. Um, and then, as I said, I didn't know any better. And uh, so that was the way we were going to do this. So what are the problems with this approach? I'm pretty sure this slide is uh, pretty familiar to everyone here. Um, tremendous risk, right? I mean, we didn't, we, 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 in a project like this, that is a major revamp of an entire consumer experience, you really hope it launches OK, right, and doesn't blow up. Uh, and, and I've been involved with previous companies, major Match.com 2.0. We rolled out one night at 1 in the morning and rolled it back at 5 in the morning. <laughs> and, and that was not a pretty sight and not a fun experience. Um, two, you know, this was, not a, this was a long process. As I said, this was about a six-month development cycle. And so it, it certainly isn't an example of rapid development. Uh, perhaps the biggest problem is that we had no idea whether consumers would actually like the new ancestry. After six months of development and work, we sprung it on consumers, a little bit of research in advance, and I would say that they loved two-thirds of it. And about a third of it, they were ready to attack our building with pitchforks because there were certain facets of this experience that they just didn't like. And we didn't have the opportunity to gather continuous, ongoing feedback uh, from them as we were building it. Um, and then lastly, you know, this was a lot of change at once. And so an ancestry is not a simple site, nor was it a simple site even you know, six years ago or seven years ago. A uh, lot of dependencies, a lot of teams running around trying to build different features that were inter interdependent on each other. Uh, so it was, uh, it was complex. It was hard. So really, I would say that the Cobalt experience, which, by the way, let me say, was a massively, it was a massively successful set of changes. It was very painful. Uh, but it, 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 to a very real extent, set Ancestry off on a new direction, uh, which uh, you know, has allowed us to grow as successfully as we've grown over the last six or seven years. Uh, but I think we recognized in that experience that we had to do things differently. Um, we needed to get stuff to market faster. We needed to break up 
that change and get bits and pieces of it to market faster uh, and, 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 um, and essentially make smaller changes all the time on an ongoing basis. Um, and, and to that point that I mentioned earlier, we really needed to have a process that was much more connected to consumer feedback so that we could, in real time, figure out whether these wonderful ideas that we had uh, come up with to advance the service were, in fact, ones that advanced the consumer experience. Um, and, and, and as I said before, we had a lot of systems that had to change a lot of time, and so we had to have systems that could allow us to uh, change different systems in parallel. Um, and so our view was this thing called Agile really is uh, the way to go. Now, before I go, to, let me go back to this page and say, so this was launched summer of uh, 2006, and I would say that for a couple of years, we, we tried to bring Agile into our company and have the culture sort of migrate to that. And, I, and I'd say, honestly, over most of that time, uh, we were not terribly successful. I, and I think because we were trying to put in place new systems, and I'm not sure that we were attacking the things that really needed to change with the culture. Um, so now, fast forward to March 2010, and I'll sort of take you through uh, you know, a brief three-year timeline of really what has been a pretty phenomenal transformation at our company. Um, so it really began you know, in this March 2010. John, who was kind enough to introduce me and, and make up a bunch of stuff about me, uh, joined our company uh, as uh, director of agile development. Um, and John's role was to, you know, try to turn this company onto this system of development. And I think that involved, obviously, um, rolling out, you know, Scrum uh, and uh, lean practices. Um, but, but more importantly, you know, doing what we thought was necessary to sort of evolve the culture and have the culture adopt uh, this new system. Um, so then, really, the next nine months uh, after we started on this journey, uh, really focused on um, educating people. Um, and, and I would say that uh, you know, this was uh, a, a process of, more than anything else, John parachuting into group by group by group at the company um, and coaching, teaching, you know, inspiring, probably wrapping a few people on the knuckles every once in a while to try to get teams, you know, to, I mean, teaching teams how to operate in this way and inspiring them to want to operate in this way. And, and I think one of the things I can say about this nine-month period is that this was a time as an observer, right, sort of outside of this education process, it was incredibly tangible how much enthusiasm and excitement uh, got lit up team by team as they sort of adopted these new ideas and new way uh, of working together. And it really was the beginning of a wave of excitement and enthusiasm uh, for, uh, for building products at, at Ancestry. Uh, the last two years, so nine months into this process, I think the attention at our company uh, turned to uh, really pushing these ideas out through the whole company. Uh, so agile for the, for the enterprise. Um, and what did that mean? Architecture to start with. Um, and I think what we realized is to really take the ideas that benefited individual projects and extend them throughout the whole company and impact the way the whole company operated uh, was not as easy as just coaching the marketing team and, and, and other teams. It really did require some fundamental evolution of uh, a lot of things, including architecture. So, you know, we were a fairly systems-centric uh, architecture uh, company, uh, not really uh, a whole lot of services built in place uh, to allow us to, to move more quickly. So this was a huge area that we needed to change. Um, infrastructure, um, you know, really, really hard to implement uh, Agile across uh, uh, an enterprise when you're manually uh, configuring systems and manually uh, rebooting systems. So a ton of work to do there. Um, DevOps. Um, you know, during this period, we were a public company for most of that period. Uh, we're now a private company. We had uh, 
Mike Schrepfer, uh, the CTO uh, of Facebook on our board. And, uh, and I know this was, you know, we tried to connect Mike to Scott Sorensen, our CTO, and we did connect to, the, to a bunch in, in, in our teams. And this was one of the real areas that I, I remember learning from Mike, that this idea of DevOps, the idea of taking, uh, really extending uh, Agile into the technology operations groups and having uh, you know, DevOps folks part of these teams and it was a huge, important uh, advancement as well. Um, and then continuous delivery. I mean, this, uh, again, I think probably core to the, the theme of this conference. Uh, the idea that we really needed to begin to automate uh, the rollout of, of, new f uh, of, of, of d delivery of technology, uh, breaking roles into smaller pieces, and really uh, you know, uh, enabling teams to be able to push content, or push uh, new features out uh, sort of at, at, at the time that they think is right, rather than waiting for you know, our once a month or every two week uh, role. Uh, so now we'll fast forward to a project that we took on last year. Uh, and the, this was the, the launch of an incredibly important content collection in Ancestry. Uh, the 1940 census. And so a little bit of context as to why, you know, 1940 was important to us at the time. So the 1940 census obviously is something, or a census, something that's taken every 10 years, held by uh, the uh, National Archives or the uh, uh, Census Bureau, in fact, for 72 years and then released to the public. Uh, and so we hadn't released a U.S. census in 10 years. Uh, ten years ago, we were a very different company. There really weren't a lot of competitors. This time around, uh, the, the category had developed. There were, we knew there were going to be multiple players in our space, also alongside Ancestry, releasing, indexing, and digitizing that census and releasing it to the public. And from a you know, defensive perspective, we felt like this was the first time in a long time that you know, small disruptive competitors might be able to make a little bit of noise in the space and chip away at uh, what is a, you know, very, very strong market position uh, here in the United States. So we realized we really needed to uh, do something awesome and do a lot of awesome things for the 1940 census. So um, I think this was, I think, the first time that we uh, uh, really implemented sort of continuous deployment of uh, a whole host of systems. And I think there were f something like 40 individual services uh, that were rolled out over a period of four months, a lot of them behind the scenes, in advance of the release of this 1940 census. Um, I think there was one team, in fact, that was able to make um, you know, five updates to their system in the course of one day, thanks to the continuous delivery uh, uh, adoption. So I'd say this was incredibly successful for us, and uh, really, I think, in a lot of ways, cemented uh, the commitment to this way of operating uh, at Ancestry. So um, what are the lessons that I think we have learned uh, at a company, so, or at our company? First and foremost, I think it is really about culture, uh, and it is about sort of the emotional and psychological commitment to operating in a very, very different way. Um, two, our goal, as I said at the very beginning, is to build a lot of great stuff, and build it, roll out new features, and radically transform how people do family history. The way to do that, small bits at a time, right? The, 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 the idea that we can, on paper, design you know, the new Ancestry, Ancestry 3.0, and roll it out in all once is now uh, in our past. Two, we've gotten really good at this, of rolling out you know, small bits of innovation, having customers react to it, further, moving further down uh, the roadmap if they like it, and course correcting uh, if they don't. Um, and you know, importantly, much less risk. Uh, we're now you know, significantly larger, significantly more complex than we were even uh, seven years ago when we were uh, rolling out Cobalt. Uh, and we can't afford, frankly, to make giant rolls that break ancestry and have us go down uh, for you know, any period of time. And then I would say, perhaps you know, most importantly, and this 
uh, echoes what I said a moment ago about uh, the enthusiasm and the energy that I think we observed as you know, individual teams got the agile thing right and really started working together. Um, more innovation, which comes from being able to actually realize a technology or product vision faster uh, at the company, uh, has led to a you know, massively happier company. Uh, I think one of the huge frustrations circa 2006 was how hard it was to get anything done at Ancestry, how long it took to get anything done. And look, we have a lot of incredibly smart, passionate people at Ancestry. And to, to shackle them and not allow, uh, not enable them to uh, you know, push out their vision and, and, and bring new features to customers was incredibly frustrating at the time. Today, um, you know, I think it's safe to say uh, there's probably as, there's more energy, more enthusiasm for uh, uh, the company than there ever has been. Frankly, because we're just able to do more stuff. We're able to move from initial vision of something to it's in front of consumers faster uh, because of these changes. Um, but we're not out of the woods. We have, oops, I think I just turned that off. There we go, wrong button. Uh, we, but we still have challenges. Uh, we have not fixed, we have not repaid all of our code debt to uh, uh, move off of some of our le legacy technologies. There's still some major systems that, uh, that, that are you know, sort of old code that really need to be updated and fixed. And now we're a company with lots and lots of brands. And, and everything I've been talking about is Ancestry.com. But as we've acquired uh, a number of uh, services over the years and as we've launched new ones, uh, we're left with uh, not quite a hodgepodge, but certainly a great number of brands and a great number of systems, uh, many of which are not operating in this manner. So this is one of our great challenges going forward uh, is to uh, is to, is to push out uh, this, uh, the discipline of, of this uh, way of operating to the rest of our company. Um, and that's it, so thank you. And I think we have a few minutes for questions or uh, an extended break.